Our journey into the city of Chester is initially unexciting and suburban as you steadily drop down a series of wide locks, but you soon discover that the canal takes you into the heart of this historic city and global tourist destination. There's a bit of everything for the visitor here. Roman walls and then Roman amphitheatre, because Chester started out as a Roman fort and one of the main army camps in Britain at that time. There's medieval buildings and some truly upmarket shopping. The Saxons extended the walls against invading Danes and William the Conqueror built a castle to help defend against the nearby Welsh. You can almost walk around the city walls. One section has been under restoration for decades um, and there are both genuine medieval buildings and Victorian copies. Those city centre black and white buildings tend to be the Victorian copies but the two-storey Chester Rows are now shops and restaurants and in these streets you'll see many tourists from across the globe clicking cameras much as they would in the Tower of London or Stratford-upon-Avon. It's one of those places. It's also a go-to destination for filmmakers looking for backdrops with some history and style. Now, it would be easy to assume in the city centre that the Industrial Revolution left this piece of British history untouched. But the coming of canals and later the railways boosted the population considerably along with the growth of industry in the nor nearby North Wales coalfield. The canal brings boats almost into the city centre and you can moor under the towering town walls and take a saunter into the city or along, along the walls themselves, perhaps passing a falconry display in the grounds of the cathedral along the way. It's that sort of city. The canal passes alongside those city walls in a deep vertical red sandstone cutting. Curious buttresses and high-level bridges punctuate the sky as you follow the walls to the Northgate Three Lock Staircase. The locks are impressively deep, perhaps because an original Five Lock Staircase was removed to make way to these, for these giants when the canal from Ellesmere Port was linked to the Chester Canal in 1797. The basin at the bottom of the staircase leads to the arm that takes you down to the River Dee by way of a couple of locks. Unfortunately, it's now rarely used and uh, pretty neglected. This was the terminus of the original Chester Canal before it became part of the Shropshire Union. And Chester was a place to linger as long as the somewhat restrictive timings imposed by the Canal and River Trust will allow. You may arrive on a race day and Chester Racecourse, just outside the walls on the other side of the city from the canal, is famous for its horses' high fashion and one of the most impressive settings in the country. And below the town is the River Dee. Not much of a port these days as vessels have become larger and the Dee has been allowed to silt up. But this is the river that flows down from Clangochlan and the Chester Canal was originally planned to follow that route. You can take a river trip and get another view of the city. In fact, Chester has to be one of the best destinations on the canal system. One sadly missed by boaters who choose to travel in rings invented by those selling canal holidays. It's worth the out and back journey.